I'm that guy, and I wanted to talk about, the reason I'm back up here now is I wanted to talk about something very similar uh, to Tessa, and central concept for me, or I guess the idea that I really want to talk about is that, that, that um, question of what is the role of your audience in a TV show? So it occurred to me, and I, some of you are familiar with this, when I sent out the invites for this presentation today, I kind of said, you know, the last new reality or the last new format in television, major format, was like the late 90s. So we had reality TV and, you know, Big Brother and Survivor and all that stuff. And if you think about it and just step back and think, okay, reality TV, 1999 or whatever it was when it came out. And then since then, there's been all this stuff happening online. And you think about like what has changed since say 2000 to now online? Facebook, YouTube, Google, LinkedIn, iPhone, iPad. Essentially the connection of the planet has happened pretty much in that decade. Television though in many ways, from my point of view, hasn't really reflected that like massive sea change. So, the online world has changed really dramatically, but I don't think TV has changed anywhere near as dramatically. And I think there's something going on over there that is an opportunity over there, and especially because the iPad and the smartphone came along, because it was really the first kind of technology that allowed these two to sort of talk to each other. And it's like, it's good and bad, right? And there's going to be a few presentations today, like Moira will talk about it, and James, wherever you are, uh, will talk about it, in that what happens over here is often noisy and messy and unfiltered and full of pornography and all sorts of stuff that you can't really put over there. So there's opportunities there and challenges. But what I kind of saw when I look at this is like, this is actually the first time ever within the last few years where we can take the audience that's watching the show and because they're online, put them back into the show. And I think that's sort of a powerful phenomenon and I think it's a phenomenon that lends, um, there's a lot of potential to it because every time we do that, we get the same sort of results back. The audience engages more with the show for a longer period. So it has a significant impact for us as storytellers because they're listening to our story longer. There's a lot of people playing in this space. So this is an example uh, that The Voice in the UK did in which they pulled profile pictures of their registered users and put together this collage and put it on TV. Um, you can actually see some of the individual users in there. Hawaii Five-0 a few weeks ago allowed the audience to pick the ending of the story. Uh, let's make a deal allows the studio audience now to do prizing. First time ever for a game show doing that. This is all stuff like within the last couple months. Um, so the audience picks some of the prizes that the contestants win. It creates this like two way back and forth sort of thing. Uh, this was a show that we did uh, last year called Canada's Smartest Person in which we gave the audience an interface to play the same game that the people on TV played. and they had the same sort of jeopardy in terms of the timers. Um, Dragon's Den, we allowed the audience to rate the pitches on TV. Um, this is Shark Tank in the US. So they could rate the pitches in real time and then you could see what the audience thought of that pitch in real time as that bar moved around. The opportunity for me when we start doing these things is we see a similar kind of phenomenon happening and it's sort of like this just to use a really simple uh, sort of chart, is that we take a television viewer, we get fans, the internet, which is really good at connecting one person to another person, allows the fans to create a community. And if you do that well and encourage that, that community then extends itself out into the real world. And I'll show you sort of a dorky example of that with this video. <laughs> Well, no 
Nobody knew or could tell that it would go so well. So what this is is contestants that sent in a video, produced it, filmed it, shot it, edited it, sent it in to us to show support for a particular um, contestant on TV. So it's fans, it's super fans. Does anyone recognize music? The music is uh, the, also the problem with this video. And when I was talking about the fact that it was messy and the stuff that comes in on the internet is an opportunity and a challenge, that video is one of the challenges. So the video itself doesn't allow, you can't put it on TV. It's copywritten music. So we can't do anything with it. So what happens is we get this scenario where we have all this activity happening over here and our audience is really passionate and they're doing all this crazy stuff that we really like and we can't use it on our TV show. So there's sort of questions, there's an opportunity that comes out of it and a challenge and the challenge is how do we filter it? How do we direct their input to make it meaningful on the show? And I think the examples I showed you were examples where we're sort of scratching the surface of what's possible. I think you can take a step further if you start thinking about making TV shows where your audience is, in a, char is a character in the show from day one, and then you start, start thinking, how do I control that character? How do I filter that character's input? How do I use them in such a way that I can aggregate it so that it's a little bit less messy? And I'll show you another example of messy. We did, but the timing on the production schedule would take months. So, yeah, I mean, it was like, we got a show next Sunday, and we got to wait for Sony or BMG or whoever owned it to get a response back, and it's just like it didn't fit within our production schedule. But had we known it was going to come at us, that would have been a different story. So it's a matter of anticipating that the audience will do that sort of thing and say, I want to get it in there. Now I do for next time. Here's an image of... Uh, I think it's Manhattan. The white is uh, Flickr, or the orange is Flickr photographs. The white is individual tweets. It's a heat map. It's an example of a ton of data condensed into, you know, a geographic space. Again, it's that same sort of thing. As a TV producer, this looks cool, but it's kind of boring. And what do I do with it? Like, this is millions of images. And millions of people, like tweeting and posting photos. How can I control that? So when you start thinking about the audience as a character, it gets you into a space where you're asking the right questions. How can I filter that to do something meaningful with it? And I think it has particular significance around news broadcasting, sports, reality, variety formats. There's a lot of ways that you can do things with that. This is nothing. Um, so what's the story? I think the question here is, as a television producer, you're well aware of the story that you're trying to tell. You're well aware of the core concept that you're trying to tell. The question that the audience will have what is, what do you want me to do? And there's a lesson I've kind of learned really the hard way um, in dealing with audience around TV, but particularly online, is that you have to tell them what you want and then you have to show them someone else doing it. Otherwise, it's really hard to learn the lesson. If we don't show them themselves on TV, the idea of getting them to participate in your program just becomes a bit of an amorphous concept. But when you show it, then it becomes a different thing. And that's also the carrot to get involved. Um, formats in which you could do this. This is the banker. Remember that guy in Deal or No Deal? Could that be the audience? Yeah, no problem. That could happen today, easily. A maze. So what if contestants are here and the audience has the God view to try and show their favorite contestant how to get out of it? What if you start thinking about concepts where what if the audience in real time could actually present challenges to the contestants and block gates of people they don't like? What if the audience is good and evil? 
So there's potential there for formats like that. And even bigger mazes. What does a maze in an urban landscape look like where you have contestants interacting with it, but the audience who also lives there, who is also online, can contribute to your story and be part of it and live in it? It starts creating an idea where your television show could be a recap of everything that happens in the maze during the week, but the show is also your life because you're in it. So it's sort of a different way to think about programming. And I find that when you start thinking about ideas like that, immediately you have questions. Is that really possible? Is it technically possible? Like, could we actually do this? Are we gonna get rights for this? Like, what's it gonna cost, all that stuff? I don't know. Like, I don't, you know, it's like, I'm not the storytelling guy, but what I do know is that half of these people probably have smartphones and we've already got the geographic overlay for the map to be able to grab the data, aggregate it, filter it, and figure out how we want to present it. We can connect them, not only to us, but to each other. All of it creates an opportunity for a different sort of narrative. And I think that's what I find particularly exciting. And that is also sort of a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today. So I'm sort of like hitting on individual concepts that you will see later this morning and later this afternoon. I think that's it. Questions. <laughs>